Good morning, everyone. I'm Diane Palangan. I'm your council person if you live in District 2. Even if you don't, you can always give me a holler. I want to thank everybody for coming. What a wonderful turnout we have and what talented children we have. <clears throat> you will be witness to that with the slide program. It's just amazing. There are a few out there that just take your breath away. So I want to give you a little um, information. I know you just saw a wonderful slideshow on Dr. King. In his life, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. lived through unspeakable prejudice and injustice. But rather than raising his fist in anger, he offered his hand in brotherhood. This is because Dr. King knew that we can only overcome adversity by standing together, united as one people. On August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King stood before a crowd of 250,000 and articulated his dream for the American future. A dream of hope, justice, and equality for all, regardless of race, color, or creed. 52 years later, those inspirational words have become so ingrained into the American spirit that many of us can recite our favorite portions of Dr. King's speech. We have made substantial progress in the past 52 years, including the passage of crucial federal civil rights legislation during the 60s, as well as the election of our nation's first African-American president in 2008. However, there is still work to be done to fully realize the enormity of Dr. King's dream. Today, we honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and legacy. In 2011, we celebrated the dedication of a memorial to Dr. King on the National Mall. He rightfully stands with Lincoln, Washington, and Jefferson, men whose words, like those of Dr. King, help shape the nation that we strive to be. When Dr. King told us, human progress is the neither automatic nor inevitable, every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle, and the tireless exertions of passionate and concerned, dedicated individuals. What he meant was that all of us have a stake in creating a more perfect union. Moving forward, we must ensure that Dr. King's powerful message of brotherhood continues to extend to all of our citizens. We must ensure that so many of the battles we fought with Dr. King equal access to voting, education, and jobs are at the core of what we stand for today and advocate for tomorrow. That is why we cannot forget about those who are jobless or homeless or sick. That is why we cannot turn our backs on job creation, access to affordable health care, access to home loans, student loans, and capital for small business startups. These are tools by which his dream becomes a reality for millions of Americans. As we have done during previous commemorations on the March of Washington, we should take this occasion to measure how far we have progressed toward Dr. King's dream and commit ourselves to reaching it. Let our tribute to Dr. King be that while we laud our successes, we know that there is more work to be done. The road to equality and freedom has never been an easy one. By standing together as one, we shall overcome all obstacles. Let us all stand while we lift every voice and sing. Every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, break with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise as the listening skies, let it resound round as the
seated. I want to thank council member Diane Palangin for the wonderful remarks that she made uh, and for her presence being here today. And I want to thank all of you parents and finalists for being here today with us because this program would not be possible if it were not for you. As the diversity committee was contemplating what the theme would be for this year's program, we thought about some of the things that are happening currently in our nation. And we thought about some of the uh, violence and the shootings that have been going on in many cities around the United States, in, in Ferguson, Missouri, and in Chicago, and in New York. And these shootings were occurring of citizens and of police. And as we thought about that, we said, this is not who we are as the city of Bowie. And this is not who we want to be. We said, instead, we are a city where children and parents of many different races, ethnicities, religions, abilities, are friends and they go to school together, they work together, and we care for one another. We are a community. We said that we are a city that values diversity on every level. We are a city where our police officers know every resident by name and by face, and they work very hard to keep our citizens safe. And we are a city where women and minorities have equal opportunities in contracting and hiring. We said, we, the city of Bowie, are champions of the dream. And we want to be a beacon of light for the rest of the world, that this is how Dr. King envisioned the world to be in his dream. We uphold the principles in Dr. Martin Luther King's dream as reflected in the proclamation that will be read as soon as I finish speaking by Council Member Isaac Trouth and in all of the entries for the finalists and, the, and all of our participants. We have come very far, however, the work is not yet done. We must march on and continue to march for justice. We must stand for equality, and we must pray for peace. Thank you very much. And now Councilman Isaac Trouth will come up and give a proclamation for the city. Thank you, Chairman. Ms. Dixon, thank you very much. Uh, I have a few housekeeping uh, notes. Uh, one, I just received a text message from Councilman Brady. He is sick and uh, he wishes to send his regrets that he could not make it. Also, uh, I want to say thank you for everybody being here on behalf of the Mayor, uh, the Honorable G. Fred Robinson. Mayor Robinson could not be with us today. He is out of town on a family event. Uh, is D4 Wolfrey in the audience? Okay. All right. Uh, one of the things I want to say is uh, I like to have Councilwoman Diane Palangan to come up to the podium with me. Uh, you just heard from our Chair Dixon, and she talks about her, her exact statement was, we are a city of diversity at every level. This is the immediate past pro Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Bowie. I am the current Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Bowie. Looks like we are a diverse city, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, I'd like to just say congratulations to all of the participants. 
and congratulations and thank you to the three principals that I saw stand up. There may be more here and of course, uh, since I'm at the podium, I'm gonna have to take uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, if you will, uh, present uh, policy statement or uh, give a shout out to our principal in District 4 and who says, and it's true, that Pointer Ridge is a great school. Pointer Ridge Elementary School. <laughs> Dr. Mary Stevenson. Okay, we have a proclamation from the city of Bowie and it's on behalf of the city of Bowie honoring the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it states, whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man of remarkable intellect and spirit who made it his life's work to seek peace and improve the lot of those who were oppressed. And whereas Dr. King taught others to work for change by speaking out against injustice wherever it is found by not accepting the status quo and when necessary by peacefully protesting. And whereas while his life was cut short in 1968 by violence, his vision of equality has been taken up by others who, made, who have made tremendous progress since that time. And whereas we acknowledge that Martin's work must continue until our nation's promise and opportunities are within the grasp of all Americans. Now therefore be it proclaimed that on this weekend, when we recognize Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for his many accomplishments that we each in our own way become champions of his dream through acts of kindness and service to others. And by working towards a day when the dignity and humanity of every person is respected. Presented by the city, by the Bowie City Council, this 17th day of January, 2015, signed by our mayor, the Honorable G. Fred Robinson, and attest by Awoda Hernandez, the city clerk. Thank you. On behalf of the city of Bowie, I'd like to make this presentation to you. Thank you, Council Member and Mayor Pro Tem Isaac Trouth and uh, Council Member Diane Palangin. I also uh, see that we have our newly elected County Council Member present, Todd Turner. So I want to thank you for coming. And I also want to extend thanks to um, the members of the Diversity Committee who are here uh, because we certainly would not have been able to uh, put, on, put together this wonderful program uh, if it had not been for you. And uh, starting off with the city liaison, Una Cooper, uh, she is responsible for putting together so much of the presentation that you all will see today and compiling all of that. So I want to thank her for her hard work. And also uh, the other diversity committee members that are here, uh, Babatunde Alec Bele, Alec Beleye, excuse me, uh, Jen Marie Dewberry, uh, Alice Asangane, Gwen McLean Digby, and Jenny Gilbo. Uh, Jenny is not here with us today, but she is a very hardworking member of the diversity committee. Uh, and we have two. Uh, prospective members of the committee. They will be joining us soon, but they showed up today uh, to show their commitment to this committee and are working hard already. And that is uh, Patricia Pes uh, Chastain and also Heike Newland, Nyland, excuse me. <laughs> so I want to thank all of you uh, very much for your hard work. I also really want to thank the parents and the grandparents and because we know that the 
finalists wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And then let's all give a round of applause to all of our participants and our finalists because they have done an outstanding job. Okay, so for this year, our theme again is Champions of the Dream. And we are going to recognize the finalists in three categories. Um, K through second grade is the coloring contest. Third through fifth grade is the poster contest. And middle and high school is the vide videographic arts uh, contest. And there will be prizes uh, that will be awarded. And those will be awarded uh, during February in Black History Month at the council meeting. Uh, there will be first, second, and third place winners for each contest, and the prizes will be $100 uh, dollars for first place, $50 for second, and $25 for third place. So when I call your name, if you uh, can come up and uh, if I can get the council members up front uh, to shake hands of the participants. Parents, you are welcome to take pictures of your child uh, or grandchild when they come up to receive their, uh, their certificate. You all can go out there. Yes, out, you all can go out there. Okay, so the first category that we have is K through second, and this is our coloring contest. And we will be displaying the entries as we call out the finalists' names. Our first finalist is Abraham Bretzinger, and Abraham is a kindergartner at Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Our next finalist is Cameron Edward Scott, and Cameron is a first grader at Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Our next finalist is Kaylee Gatewood. Kaylee is a kindergartner at Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Next, we have Natalia Guevara. Natalia is a second grader at Northview Elementary School. Next, we have William Harper, a second grader at Rock Ledge Elementary School.
Next we have Joseph Harrison, a kindergartner at St. Pius. Next, we have Braxton Hayes, a second grader at Holy Trinity Episcopal Day School. Next, we have Anushay Imran, a second grader at Rockledge Elementary School. Okay, next we have Mary Lavley, a first grader at Rockledge Elementary. I'm not sure if Mary is here today. Okay, we have Colby Matthews, a first grader at Holy Trinity Episcopal Day School. Next, we have Jalen Neptune, a second grader at St. Pius. Next, we have Gabrielle Patterson, a second grader at Tulip Grove Elementary School. Next finalist is Chase Piev, ex kindergartner at Pointer Ridge Elementary School. I'm not sure if Chase is here today. Our next finalist is Madeline Roberts, a second grader from St. Pius. Our next finalist is Karina Robinson, a first grader from Pointer Ridge.
Our next finalist is Cody Seaton, a first grader from Tulip Grove. Next, we have Lainey Smith, a kindergartner from Pointer Ridge Elementary. Next, we have Deja Stansel, who is a second grader at St. Pius. Next, we have Taylor Sterling, a second grader at Pointer Ridge Elementary. Next, we have Roshan, Tennessee, a kindergartner from Pointer Ridge Elementary. I'm not. <laughs> Next we have Richard Vargas, a second grader from Pointer Ridge Elementary. I don't think Richard is here today. Next, we have Kimberly Zalea Luna, a first grader from Highbridge Elementary. Next, we have Lainey Zimmerman, a first grader from Pointer Ridge Elementary. Okay, I don't think Lainey is here today. Uh, that completes our finalists for the coloring contest. Let's give them all a round of applause. Our next category is the poster contest. 
And the poster contest finalists have written a description to go along with their posters. So when I call the finalist's name as they come up, uh, will each finalist please read his or her uh, description that you have written along with your entry. Our first finalist for the poster contest is Camden Baker, a fifth grader from St. Pius. Martin Luther King Jr. wanted everyone to be treated equal. On my poster, Martin Luther King Jr. is looking down from heaven at all the people's lives he has changed. From kids playing with other kids to parents working with other parents from different races, Dr. King had a dream and stood up for it. We wouldn't be sharing our world today without Dr. King and his dream. We are now the champions of his dream. Our next finalist is Adriana Boramio, and that Adriana is a fifth grader from Pointe Ridge Elementary. This poster shows the work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Thurgood Marshall. The picture shows a scene of I Have a Dream speech and the Supreme Court. The poster also has two quotes from these people. Our next finalist is Carmen Bowen, a fourth grader from Porno Ridge Elementary. Walking hand in hand. This picture shows how kids of all races are now united at my school because of Martin Luther King Jr. This picture is how I was affected by Martin by Dr. King's dream because it, if, if it wasn't for him, blacks and whites would, would be segregated to this day. Our next finalist is Claudia De La Paz, a fourth grader from Pointe Ridge Elementary. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is an inspiration for me to continue to dream and become a champion. I came to this country as a mandatory, but when I learned about Martin Luther King Jr. and what he had done, I did not feel inferior to my classmates. His speech, I Have a Dream, made all people in America believe about equality, freedom, and to dream big. With his belief, a mandatory like me did not find hard time to live harmoniously with other people in my community. Our next finalist is Mia Dones, a fourth grader from Pointe Ridge. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream where all people, regardless of race, would be treated equally. The poster shows children of all races holding hands, standing on a stack of books, which symbolize equal education for all. King also believed in justice for all, symbolized by the gable. He desired equal rights for, and that all people could be treated equally according to the laws. 
the peace signs for King's dream that all people would be able to live together in happiness and freedom. Our next finalist is Giselle Gerby, a third grader from Holy Trinity. This poster inspired me because Dr. King believed in peace. He believed white, black, and yellow people could do the same things together. Our next finalist is Jocelyn Gross, a third grader at Whitehall Elementary. This poster means to me that if we were separated, then I would feel limited on having new friends. The left side shows boys and girls playing separately at school because of their skin color. It was not a happy time. The right side shows boys and girls of different skin color playing together. I can't imagine living in a world where I couldn't have friends because of the color of their skin. I am a champion of Dr. King's dream because I can play with everyone no matter what their skin color is. I live in a happier time. Wonderful. Our next finalist is Joshua Leedy, a fifth grader from Highbridge Elementary. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. influenced me to know no matter who you are or what you look like, you should be treated equally and with respect. That's what he wanted for everyone. He wanted equality and respect. Dr. King wanted freedom and rights. He wanted the racial criticism to stop. Our next finalist is Evelyn Martinez, a fourth grader from Rockledge Elementary. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Jr.'s dream was for everyone to be treated equally and not, not just by the color of their skin. A lot of people helped Martin Luther King follow his dream. Not only was it Dr. King that fought for civil rights, a lot of people like Oprah, Rosa Parks, Jackie Robinson, and President Obama have fought for civil rights too. My poster shows when Dr. King did his speech and a lot of people agreed with him, so there was a march. Rosa Parks did not like the idea of black people sit, sitting in, in the back of the metro bus or any bus. All people sit wherever they want, and not just by the color of the skin today. Our next finalist is Catherine Oldfield, a fifth grader from St. Pius. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me by speaking up for what he thought was right, even when not everyone agreed with what he had to say.
Our next finalist is Miley Oriana, a fourth grader from Rockledge Elementary. My poster is about how Dr. Kin wanted people to be treated fairly. Most people agree that everyone should be treated fairly and make friends and be happy. Our next finalist is Brooklyn Patterson, a third grader from two, excuse me, a, yeah, third grader, excuse me, from Tulip Grove Elementary. How are you doing? You're looking very nice. There you go. Okay, Mike. Okay. Oh, Mama has a lot of beautiful girls. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream is still continuing in our lives today. We play, work, and worship together. He taught us how to treat each other equal and fair. Our next finalist is Mackenzie Rogers, a fourth grader from Pointer Ridge Elementary. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. affected me by his strong commitment in combating racial inequality through nonviolence. I can go to school with Kit with kids of all races and sit on a public bus without the bus driver telling me to move to the back of the bus. I am very thankful for his dedication and, and his vision in making our country a better place to live for all of its citizens. Our next finalist is Sania Stanley, a fifth grader at Pointer Ridge Elementary. Dr. King's dream encouraged me to acknowledge people even if their skin color doesn't match mine. He wanted his four little children to not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. At my school, different races of children join hands throughout the day. Dr. King's dream focused on all Americans being treated equal. This taught me to treat everyone nice, no matter where they come from. As a champion of the dream, I am inspired to continue to make sure Americans are treated fairly. Our next finalist is Reagan Travers, a third grader at Tulip Grove Elementary. Okay, uh, Reagan is not here with us today, but I'm going to, oh, she is here. Oh, okay, great. I have been influenced by Martin Luther King Jr. because he saw black people were not being treated fairly. He held protest marches, he made speeches, and became against unfairness. Soon after he died, his work affected people all over the world. Now we are in a free nation. Our 
Our next finalist is Adeugo Ume, a fifth grader from St. Pius. Dr. King influenced me because without him, I wouldn't be able to attend school. In the poster, I drew how black and white people can be on the same bus, where everyone is allowed in a shop, how women could vote, and how everyone is treated equally in the library. This is all because of Dr. King's famous I Have a Dream speech. In this speech, Dr. King explained how he wanted African American and Hispanic to be treated fairly. So now, years later, his dream came true. And our last finalist for the poster contest is Jarrett Yupari, a fourth grader at Rockledge Elementary. My poster is about everyone being treated fairly, even when riding the bus. During segregation, black people would, would have to sit at the back of the bus. That is not true today because of people like Dr. King. Okay, let's give all our poster finalists a round of applause. And finally, we have our video contest finalists. Uh, our first finalist is Elizabeth Allen, an 11th grader at St. John's College High School. Many of us think of champions as sports players who win trophies or medals. However, being a champion is more than that. Champions guide people, lead people, and help people. They stand up for justice no matter how long it takes or what anyone else says. Martin Luther King Jr. provides a perfect example of a champion. He fought for racial equality that is still not fully present in the United States today. He declared that the battle for equality would not stop until justice reigned throughout the United States. Just as he fought for equality in his time, it is our duty to continue to fight for equality today. Only then can we be champions of the dream. My video depicts this message as it explains what a champion truly is, why Martin Luther King Jr. is a champion, and what we all have to do to become champions. Number one, winner, title holder. These are what people think of when they hear the word champion. But what does it mean to be a champion? Being a champion is more than just winning, more than getting that high score or doing better than other people. Being a champion means that you stand up for what you believe in. It means that you become the light amidst the dark guiding others towards the truth. Martin Luther King Jr. was a champion for the rights of all people. Not only did he have a dream of equality, he worked to make that dream a reality. He declared, the whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. Like Martin Luther King Jr., we must make our own declarations if we wish to be champions. We must decide if we are willing to fight for the same equality he fought for. Only when we make that commitment to work towards equality, and we do work towards equality, can we be champions for the dream.
grader at Georgetown Visitation Preparatory School. Using several direct quotes from Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech, I wrote a song that I hope captures Mr. King's hope for brotherhood between all races. When Martin Luther King wrote his speech, he faced a world where African Americans and other races faced discrimination, segregation, and poverty. While the world has changed since 1963, racial prejudice still thrives. The only way we can hope for a better tomorrow is to begin with ourselves, ensuring that we treat others with the respect they deserve. Through both making a positive example for others and advocating for rights for all races, we fight to make the dream of Martin Luther King a reality. Can you ignore your brother, crippled by the man who calls a segregation? Can you ignore your brother, held down by the chains of discrimination? Can you ignore your sister, stranded on a lonely land of poverty? Can you ignore your sister as you enjoy the vast ocean of material prosperity? Oh, Martin had dreams and so do I, but dreams remain on pillows unless someone will rise. So let me take your hand, you and me. Let's be, let's be champions of the dream. Let's be, let's be champions of the dream. And our last video con contest finalist uh, this was a joint effort by Aminju uh, and Amin uh, King and King, ninth and 12th graders at Bowie High School. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a visionary. He had hoped that one day African Americans would be able to break the chains of oppression and segregation. In the background of our video, an acoustic version of We Shall Overcome plays softly. Our video shows a handful of African Americans who have worked hard to achieve King's dream. They prove not only that the dream is obtainable, but that 52 years later, the dream is alive and well. People like them are a relentless reminder of how King's legacy encourages us to strive for something big. They are champions because they work hard until they reach their goals. But we did not only want to put celebrities in the video. One of the many definitions of the word champion is a person who fights for a cause. We included pictures of ourselves because every time we stand up for his cause or support his dream, we are champions. King's cause was not only for African Americans in their progression. He wanted people of all races and nations to get together and build a community. Everyone who supports King's cause is a champion.
Okay, that completes our video contest finalists. Let's give them another round of applause. And again, my name is Elvita Dixon. I'm the chair of the Diversity Committee. And I want to thank all of the parents, all of the finalists, and on behalf of Mayor Fred Robinson and the great city of Bowie and the Diversity Committee, we thank you for your participation. And, and I also thank you as well. And thank you to all the student artists. I'm always touched by the words of the kids and the, the, the talent that we see here. I love to see the world through your eyes. It gives me hope for the future and for our world. I think we're leaving it eventually in very capable hands. Um, just a few announcements. Um, you're welcome to join us for Punch and Cookies in the lobby. Um, before you do that, I'd like to get a group picture of all the finalists up here. and. Um, then if parents, if I don't have your email, if I haven't corresponded with you, if you want to give me your email, I can send you the group picture. And we'll also be posting it on our Facebook page. And again, the, um, the video of today will be available in a few days as a video on demand from our website, cityofbuoy.org slash view meetings. It will also be on the government channel, channel 10 for Verizon, 71 for Comcast on um, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and Sunday at 7 o'clock, and, and Saturday at 5 p.m. So with that, thank you very much. And if all the students would come up here for one group shot, we'll get you on your way. Thank you.